Good afternoon. I feel like I should start with an, an introduction of myself. But instead, I will begin by telling you an introduction to how I met my wife. Aga selle asemel ma räägin, kuidas ma kohtusin oma naisega. We are celebrating our 25th year, our 25th year anniversary this summer. Et sel suvel me tähistame 25. kulma aastapäeva. When I met my wife 26 years ago, I lived in Chicago. Kui ma kohtusin oma naisega 26 aastat tagasi, ma elasin Chicagos. And she was visiting for 10 days. Ta külastas seda kohta, oli 10 päeva seal. And friends of ours had arranged for us to meet. Ja meie sõbrad olid korraldanud, et me kohtuksime. I asked her to come to church with me on Sunday. Ma kutsusin teda pühapäeval kaasa kirikusse. And after church, we drove my sister back to her university, about an hour away. Ja pärast kirikut siis sõidutasin oma õe tunni aja tee kaugusele. After we dropped off my sister, I looked at Georgia and I said, do you have any plans the rest of the day? Ja kui me olime õe maha pannud tema koju, siis ma vaatasin Georgiat ja küsisin, et kas sul on ülejäänud päevaks plaanid tehtud. And she said, no, not really. Ta How ütles, about you? Tema vastas, et ei ole, et kuidas sinuga on. And I said, no, not really. Do you want to hang out? Ja mina küsisin, mina ütlesin, et minul ka mitte, et kas sa tahaksid midagi koos teha? <laughs> that was the last time the two of us had no plans on a Sunday in 25 years. Ja see oli siis viimane kord, kus meil kahel ei oleks olnud pühapäevaks plaane. So what did we do? We drove to downtown Chicago. Mida me tegime? Sõitsime Chicagos and we, and we walked along the lakefront, because there's water there and there's a nice little walkway. Ja kõndisime ühte järve äärt pidi, seal on ilus ümbrus. It was a beautiful sunny day. Ja oli ilus päikseline päev. The sun was shining. The water was beautiful. Vesi oli väga ilus. And we spent all day doing nothing. Ja me veetsime terve päeva tehes mitte midagi. The hardest decision we had to make that day was Italian or Chinese food. <laughs> ja kõige raskem otsus sel päeval, mis me pidime vastu võtma, oli valida kas Hiina või Itaalia toit. I was patient. Mina olin kannatlik. It was easy to listen to her stories that went on and on. <laughs> Väga lihtne oli kuulata tema juttu, tema lugusid, mis muud kui jätkusid ja jätkusid. We paid attention to each other. Pööresime üksteisele tähelepanu. It was a beautiful day. Ja oli ilus päev. So, about a year later, we were married. Umbes aasta hiljem me olime abielus. And something started to happen in our relationship. Ja midagi meie suhtes hakkas muutuma. It started to change. See hakkas muutuma. The first thing that changed is we moved in together and we started living together. Esimene asi, mis muutus oli see, et me kolisime kokku ja hakkasime koos elama. And we had to run a home together. Ja me, me pidime koos seda kodu hoidma. Just the business of running a home, paying the bills, getting the food together, cleaning the house. Tavalised asjad pidime arveid maksma, toitu ostma, kodu korras hoidma. And the relationship started to change. Ja suhe hakkas muutuma. This seems normal. See tundub normaalne. But it's a change. Aga see on muutus. The second thing that started to happen is one of the reasons I asked Georgia to marry me is that we were very similar. Teine asi, mis juhtus, oli see, et kõigepealt ma ütlen, ma abielusin Georgiaga sellepärast, et ta tundus mulle väga sarnane. We tended to enjoy the same things. We saw the world in the same way. We had similar values and priorities. Me nautisime samu asju. Meil olid sarnased väärtused ja prioriteedid. Nägime maailma ühte moodi. But as we spent more time together, we realized we weren't exactly the same. Aga kui me rohkem aega koos veetsime, siis me saime aru, et me ei olnud täpselt ühesugused. We found out in many ways we were not only different, we were completely opposite. Et paljudes asjades tuli välja, et mitte üksnes me ei olnud erinevad, vaid me olime täitsa vastandid. Her tastes on how to decorate the house are different than mine. 
Näiteks tema maitse, kuidas kodu sisustada, on täiesti erinev minu omast. For 25 years, we still have a hard time watching a movie together. Ja tervelt 25 aastat meil on endiselt raske otsustada või vaadata koos filmi. It's very hard to find a movie that we both like. On väga raske leida film, mis meile mõlemale meeldib. So 25 years ago, we had this problem and said, okay, I have an idea. First, you pick your favorite movie and we watch that together. And then I'll pick my favorite movie and we'll watch that together. 25 aastat tagasi oli see niivisi, et hea küll, kõigepealt mina valin oma lemmikfilmi ja siis vaatame seda, siis valid sina oma lemmikfilmi ja me vaatame seda. We tried to find a solution. If it's her favorite movie, it should be pretty good, right? Ja püüdsime leida lahenduse, et kui see on sinu lemmikfilm, no see peaks olema päris hea film. So halfway through her movie that had no words in it, It had a horse running in water. Ja kuskil poole filmi peal, filmis, kus see ei olnud ühtegi sõna, kus hobune jooksis vees pikalt. I said, this is your favorite movie. Ma ütlesin, kas see on sinu lemmikfilm? It was Black Stallion, if you know the movie Black Stallion. Black Stallion. Don't watch it. Ärge vaadake seda. Our relationship started to change. Et meie suhe hakkas muutuma. Is that normal? Kas see on normaalne? It's normal. See on normaalne. But it's changing. See muutub. A third thing started happening to us in this journey of marriage. Ja kolmas asi juhtus selle labielu teekonnal. We not only were living our lives together and discovering we were different, but we started to experience some stresses and challenges. Et me mitte üksne see jaganud elu ja... Ei avastanud neid erinevusi, aga me hakkasime kogema läbi elama ka stressi ja raskusi. I went back to school and I was in school full time. She was working full time and then she had a baby. We were busy, we were tired, we had to earn money, we had to pay our bills. Ma läksin tagasi kooli, töötasin täisajaga, tema töötas täisajaga. Tal sündis laps, me pidime töötama, pidime raha teenima, arveid maksma ja olime, no teki stress. Normal? Normal. No, yeah, normal. Okay, I'm going to learn that word. Normal. How about change? Mutus. Mutus. Right. So it started to change, and I learned that it's much different to be patient and kind when you have a lot of stress than when you're walking along the water on a sunny day. Ma avastasin, et on palju raskem olla kannatlik kui sa ulle on stressi, võrredes olukorraga, kus on päikseline päev ja sa ei alutad mööda järvekallast. And we reacted differently in the stress. Ja selles stressi olukorras me reageerisime teistmoodi. When we were expecting our second daughter, the doctor gave us a notice that she might have Down syndrome. Kui naine ootas teist last, siis arst ütles, et on võimalus, et ta sünnib Downi sindroomiga. A one in two hundred chance. Üks võimalus sajast. So I said, I don't want to think about it. One in two hundred. I don't even like to think about it or talk about it. We will worry about it when it happens. One in two hundred. Ja üks kahe sajast. Ja tema ütles, et ma ei taha selle peale mõelda. Üks kahe sajast on nii väike võimalus. Me tegeleme sellega siis, kui see juhtub. And my wife wanted to talk about it with all her friends and her sisters and her mother. Ja minu naine tahtis sellest kõigest rääkida oma sõpradega, oma emaga, oma õdedega. So every time I would come home, she would be on the phone with another person telling the whole story. Then we went to the doctor's office, then he told us this. Ja igakord, kui ma koju tulin, rääkis ta telefoniga järgmise inimesega kogu seda sama lugu, kuidas me käisime arsti juures ja mis selgus. Normaal? Normaal. Normaal. But the relationship changes. Ja suhe muutus. And then the fourth thing that happens. Ja neljas asi, mis juhtus. Is suddenly, as we get to know each other, my wife discovers that sometimes I'm not very patient or not very kind. Et juhtus nii, et naine hakkas avastama, et ma ei ole alati väga kannatlik ja väga lahke. And I discover 
that she has some faults too. Ja mina hakkasin avastama, et ka temal on vigu. My wife told me around this time, she said, you never treated me like this when we were dating. Ja umbes selle ajal mu naine ütles mulle, et sa ei kohelnud mind niivisi, mitte kunagi siis, kui me väljas käisime. And I said, of course not. You would have never married me if I treated you like this when we were dating. Ja ma ütlesin, muidugi mitte, sa ei oleks minuga kunagi abielnud, kui ma siis oleks sinuga niivisi käitunud. And we never encountered this when we were dating. Ja, ja seda ka ei tulnud ette, kui me väljas käisime. So in the journey of marriage, we start to discover these deeper things that we are all, we all struggle with. Et sellel abielu teekonnal me hakkasime avastama neid sügavamaid asja, millega me kõik vaeva näeme. Normaal? <laughs> see on normaalne. Kas on normaalne? Is it norm- What's that? Normaalne. <laughs> normaalne? Yes, very normaalne? good. Yes. <laughs> Is it a change? <laughs> Kas see muutus? So if we're expecting marriage to be the sunny walk in the park where it's easy to pay attention and easy to turn towards each other, it can be difficult and confusing when we experience these normal changes that happen in a marriage. Et kui me nüüd kujutame ette, et abielu saabki olema selline nagu üks meeldiv jalutus käik pargis ja kui me hakkame neid muutusi läbi elama, siis see tekitab segadust. So what is the problem? Et milles on probleem? That no one told you that before. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Number et... one. If you don't expect this, it can be very confusing. Et kui, kui see ei vasta su ootustele, siis see võib väga segadus saada. Number two, if you're not prepared, you won't know what to do. Ja, ja kui sa ei ole selleks valmistunud või ette valmistatud, siis sa ei tea, mida teha. And the temptation is to think I married the wrong person. Ja kiusatus on mõelda, ma abielusin vale inimesega. Or my marriage is doomed. Või et mu abielu on hukule määratud. But if we look a little deeper, and understand what marriage is, we can see more clearly what the problem is. Aga kui me vaatame natuke sügavamalt, siis me näeme, milleks abielu on. Yeah, what was the last? We can see more deeply what marriage is. Yeah, et me näeme... Or what the problem is, yeah, I et think. Siis me saame aru, milles on probleem. So for the Orthodox Church, marriage is a sacrament. Ja õige su kirikus abielu on sakrament. Which means it's sustained by the Holy Spirit. See tähendab, et seda hoiab püha vaim. That the Holy Spirit unites a man and a woman together. Et püha vaim liidab mehe ja naise. <coughs> and transforms the husband and wife. Ja muudab meest ja naist abikaasasid. One author writes, according to faith, marriage in Christ raises a man and a wife to share in the divine nature. It is a way towards deification. Üks autor kirjutab, usu järgi on abielu, tõstab abielu Kristuses mehe ja naise jagama jumaliku loomust. See on teekond jumalikustumise poole. Marriage transfigures human love into divine love. Et abielu siis muudab ja transformeerib inimliku armastuse jumalikuks armastuseks. Deacon John Chrysavjis writes that love is God's gift. It is a gift of God himself. Deacon John Chrysavjis ütleb, et armastus on Jumala kingitus. See on, ta annab ise ennast selles kingituses. Elder Amelia Noss, a monk, writes marriage is a journey of love. Munk Emilianos ütleb, et abielu on armastuse teekond. The problem we see in my marriage is that in the beginning of the relationship, it's easy to turn towards my wife and listen and pay attention. But as the relationship changes and deepens, my love runs out and it becomes harder to turn towards her. The meie suhte alguses, nagu me nägime, on lihtne pöörduda naise poole, olla temale suunatud, teda kuulata kannatlikult, aga see muutub abielu jooksul raskemaks, keerulisemaks, sest just kui armastus hakkab nagu otsa saama. 
if we understand what marriage is, it's a path of changing my love for my wife into divine love for my wife that never tires of turning towards. Et abielu teekonda peaks siis mõistma niivisi, et minu armastus, minu naise vastu muutub jumalikuks armastuseks tema vastu, mis ei saa kunagi otsa. Marriage is a journey of learning to love my wife with divine love. Abielu on teekond, mille käigus õppida armastama oma naist või meest selle jumaliku armastusega. As the relationship changes, as it deepens, as we get to know each other more, Our love then grows and deepens. Et kui see suhe muutub, muutub sügavamaks, siis meie armastus muutub ka sügavamaks. Marriage is a journey of acquiring that perfect love for each other. Inquiring. Mm -hmm. uh, acquiring, getting, acquiring. receiving. Mm -hmm. Et abielu on siis teekond, et omandada seda täiuslikumat armastust. St. John Chrysostom writes, if you ask him, He will work an even greater miracle than he worked in Cana. That is, Christ will transform the water of your unstable passions into the wine of spiritual unity. Püha Johannes Krisostoomus ütleb, kui te temalt palute, siis ta teeb veel suurema ime kui Kaanas, et Kristus teeb veel suurema ime kui Kaanas. See tähendab, ta muudab teie ebapüsivate võimalikult kirgete või tunnete vee vaimse ühtsuse veiniks või liidu, vaimse liidu veiniks. So I find my fulfillment as a husband as I learn to love my wife perfectly and she becomes fully human as a woman by learning to love me with perfect love. Et nii leian mina mehena ja abikasana selle täiuse või saan täielikuks armastades teda sellise armastusega ja samamoodi naine. But in my marriage, I still love my wife imperfectly. Aga oma abielus ma ikka veel armastan ebatäiuslikult. I love my wife when it's easy, but when it's hard, it's hard to love. Ma armastan teda siis, kui see on lihtne, aga kui on raske, siis mul on raske teda armastada. And more noticeably, she loves me imperfectly. Ja veelki enam ma märkan seda, et ka tema armastab mind ebatäiuslikult. Because we know that only God loves perfectly. Sest me teame, et ainult Jumal armastab täiuslikult. But on this path of marriage, my wife's journey of growing in perfect love is interwoven with my journey of growing in love. Aga sellel abielu teekonnal siis minu abikaasa kasvamine selles jumalikus armastuses on läbi põimunud minu teekonna ja minu arenguga selles täiuslikus armastuses. And this journey of acquiring perfect love is a struggle. Ja see teekond saavutamaks seda täiusliku armastust on võitlus või pingutus. But it's not a struggle against each other. Aga mitte võitus üksteise vastu. It's a struggle against my own passions and desires, my own selfishness. Aga võitlus minu isekuse, minu kirgedega. So it's not that there are struggles on the path of marriage, but marriage is this path of struggles. See ei tähenda siis seda, et on need nagu tülid või võitlused sellel teekonnal, vaid noh, mis ta sisuliselt tähendab on see, et see teekond ise on selline võitlus. The struggle to grow in perfect love for your spouse. Võitlus, et kasvada, et armastus abikase vastu saaks täiuslikuks. And what we understand as Christians and as Orthodox is that we live out our vocation to love God by loving our spouse. Ja kristlaste õige usklikena me siis järgime seda kutsumust armastada Jumalat selles, et me armastame oma abikaasat. St. John Christensen speaks to husbands and says, Love her not so much for her sake, but for Christ's sake. Johannes Krisas Toomus ütleb, et armastage teda mitte niivõrd tema pärast, kui võrd Kristuse pärast. Do everything in a spirit of obedience to God. Tehke kõike kuulekuses Jumalale. Within marriage, my love for God is expressed by how I love my wife. Et abielus minu armastus Jumala vastu leiab väljanduse selles, kuidas ma armastan oma abikaasat. And my love for my wife shows 
my love for God. Ja minu armastus abikaasa vastu näitab minu armastust Jumala vastu. So what we can see in my marriage mida siis võib näha minu abielus is that all as we're journeying together and getting to know each other and the relationship is changing and deepening et kui me nüüd edeneme ja liigume edasi oma teekonna labielu teekonnal ja see suhe muutub ja muutub sügavamaks i learn that i love myself more than i love my wife siis ma avastan et ma armastan ise ennast rohkem kui oma abikasat and marriage reveals my own sinfulness and my own limitations nii siis abielu paljastab minu enda patosuse ja nõrkused so when we think about what happens then in marriage it becomes hard to turn towards each other nii me siis avastame abielus et üks teisele ennast suunata muutub raskeks and what does it mean to turn towards your wife or your spouse ja mida see tähendab pöörata ennast siis oma abigase poole it's not so much that my wife and I need to have these long conversations to solve these problems. See ei tähenda, et meil peaksid tingimata olema pikad vestlused, et neid probleeme lahendada. Because a lot of these problems don't have a solution. Sest paljud nendest probleemidest, paljudel nendest probleemidest ei ole lahendusi. What is the solution to my wife's poor taste in music? I mean in movies. <laughs> no näiteks, mis on lahendus siis sellel, et minu naisel on selline vilets maitse filmide osas? but we find in our differences the invitation to grow in love aga nende erinevustes me leiame kutse kasvada armastuses it's easy to love someone who's just like me väga lihtne on armastada kedagi kes on täpselt nagu mina who likes what i do who likes things the way i like it but what kind of love is that kes armastab seda mida ma teen neid asju mida ma teen aga mis armastus see on Selline. That is self love. See on enesarmastus. Marriage is a journey of learning to love someone who thinks differently, who feels differently, who has different ideas. Abielu on teekond, et õppida armastama seda, kes mõtleb erinevalt, kes tegutseb erinevalt minust. So we are not going to solve this in a conversation. Seega meil ei ole võimalik seda lahendada vestlusega. But if we look more closely in marriage, and what happens in daily life we can understand what it means to turn towards each other aga kui me lähemalt nüüd vaatame abielus seda siis me saame aru mida tähendab nagu pöörata ennast teise poole a famous marriage researcher in america named dr john gottman väga kuulus abielu uurinud teadlane ameerikas john gottman 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 he studied couples for years 25 years he observed couples uuris 25 aasta vältel abielu paare and he watched how couples interacted <coughs> ja ta jälgis kuidas paarid omavahel suhtlesid and he noticed that the couples who were happily married ta avastas et need paarid kes on õnnelikult abielus didn't have big deep conversations nad ei pidanud selliseid pikki sügavaid vestlusi <coughs> what he noticed Mida ta avastas? Is that couples are constantly reaching out to each other through the small daily conversations that happen in life. Et nad just kui sirutuvad pidevalt teise poole läbi väikeste vestluste, mis läbi terve päeva toimuvad. <coughs> and although these daily conversations can be about anything, big ja, or small. Ja need igapäevased vestlused võivad olla ükskõik millest, väikestest või suurtest asjadest. He noticed that something was happening beneath the surface. Ja ta pani tähel, et selle pinna, pealispinna all midagi toimus. These little interactions were bids for connection. There were requests or invitations for for a uh, connection that one spouse makes to the other. Et need pigem, need olid nagu väiksed kutsed selle ühenduse ja kontakti loomiseks abikasade vahel. They were bids for connection or closeness nagu palved läheduse ja kontakti järele. And how couples responded to each other would either draw them closer or farther apart. Ja see kuidas abikasa sellele vastas, sellest sõltus, kas nad muutusid lähedasemaks või jäid kaugemaks üksteisele. Think about how many times a couple 
has small exchanges throughout the day. Mõelge, kui palju on sellised väikseid kokkupuuteid paari vahel päeva jooksul. We come home, we share about our day, we talk on the telephone, we take care of the business of the household. Tuleme koju, räägime oma päevast, räägime telefonis üksteisega, korraldame igapäeva elu. All marriages have this. In the happy marriages, these conversations are actually how the couple grows closer together. See toimub kõikides abieludes, aga õnnelikes abieludes on see viis, kuidas kaks inimest lähedasemaks saavad ja kokku kasvavad. So think about all the small conversations you have in marriage. Where is the ketchup? Where is my wallet? What time are you leaving today? What's happening tonight? Mõelge kõikidele nendele väikestele vestlustele, kus mu rahakott on, mis kelsa õhtul tuled. All of these, he says, are actually bids for connection. Kõik need on just kui nagu palve ühenduse või kontakti järele. And a spouse can respond in one of three ways. Ja abikasa võib nüüd vastata kolmel erineval viisil. Turning towards, turning away or turning against. Kas ta pöördub oma abikasa poole, pöördub tema stära, tema vastu, pöördub temast ära või pöördub tema vastu? Jah. Nii jah, ühes nagu vaenulikult, vaenulikult. We're going to repeat that a bunch of times. We turn towards our spouse just by listening, putting down the newspaper, putting down the cell phone, making eye contact, is turning towards. Me pöördume tema poole siis, kui me lõpetame ajalehe lugemise, paneme telefoni käest, vaatame tale otsa. A low energy response, a nod. Selline, mis ei võta väga palju aega. Vastate nii visi. An attentive response, agreeing. That was, oh, that's right, I agree. Or a high energy response, that's great. On mitmeid neid tasemeid, siis mis suguse energiaga vastata, et see on madala energiaga, siis on võibolla oi, tore, hästi ja veel energilisemalt saab vastata. All turning towards. Kõik on, sa pöördad ikkagi tema poole. It's important to understand that the speaker is saying, I want to be connected to you. Oluline on mõista, et rääki ja ütleb tegelikult, et ma tahan olla sinuga ühenduses kontaktis. Each of us is looking to be understood and cared for by our spouse. Iga üks meist tahab olla mõistetud oma abikasa poolt ja hoolitud. And we need to understand that beneath the words, that is what is being said. Ja me peame aru saama, et sõnade all just see on see, mida öeldakse. And by understanding that the beneath the words, our spouse is saying, I want to be connected to you, can help us know how to respond. Ja kui me teame, et sõnade all, see sõnum on tegelikult, ma tahan olla sinuga ühenduses või kontaktis, siis me teame, kuidas vastata. When we turn towards our partners and their bids for connection, kui me vastame nii-öelda jaatavalt, pöördume nende poole, what does that communicate? Mida see edastab? Mis sõnumid? Mis sõnumid see edastab? I care. Ma hoolin. I'm with you. I am with you. Ma olen sinuga. I understand you. Ma saan aru. Keep going, there's more. What's that? I want to help you. I want to help you. I am on your side. Ma olen sinu poolel. Keep going, there's more. Jah, veel on, veel on. I love you, yes. I love you. Ma armastan sind. Which is if one of you to give it to. That's right, we're working towards it. We're working towards it. I value you. I value you. Ja ma väärtustan sind. There's more. On veel. I accept you. Ma aksepteerin sind. I like you. Sa meeldid mulle. I hear you. Ma kuulen sind. Ma kuulen. I am interested in you. Ma olen huvitatud sinust. I understand you, we said. How long does it take to communicate that to your spouse? Kui palju sa aega võtab, et see sõnum abikaasal edastada? Murdasa sekundist. A second. Üks sekund. So one day I was at my office. Üks päev ma olin oma töö. It was 10 minutes before class was going to start. 10 minutit enne kui tund või loeng pidi algama. And you know what I'm doing 10 minutes before class is starting? Mida ma teen 10 minutit enne seda? Scrambling. And my phone rings. Ja telefon heliseb. And it's my wife. Ja see on mu naine. We had just moved back to Boston. Olime just kolinud tagasi Bostonisse. We had been there as students. 
and we left for seven years and then came back. Olime olnud seal tudengitena vahepeal ära kolinud ja nüüd tagasi kolinud. So we were rediscovering Boston together. Ja me avastasime uuesti koos Bostonit. It's a very confusing town. See on väga keeruline linn. So my wife tells me, you're not going to believe what happened to me. Ja mu naine elistab ja ütleb mulle, sa ei usu, mis juhtus. Without thinking, I say, what? Ilma mõtlemata ütlen, mida, mis siis juhtus? And she tells me, I dropped someone off at the train and, and then I went to my doctor's office. Ma läksin rongi pealt maha ja läksin oma arsti juurde. Doctors. Doctors. Doctor. Ja arsti juurde. Uh, it's actually pediatrician. Probably the same Last word. <laughs> and she says the parking lot for the pediatrician or the OBGYN, the doctor, is the same as the train stop. Ja see parkimisplats oli sama, mis oli see arsti, oli see raute jaam. Ja, yeah, see metroo jaama. Ja, metroo jaama. Yeah. What am I thinking? Mida mina mõtlen? Why is she telling me this? Miks ta mulle seda ütleb? What is she really doing? Mida ta tegelikult teeb? Answer. Mis te arvad? She's making a bid for connection. Ja, ta palub kontakti. So I have a choice. Mul on valik. And some days I don't come home until 10 o'clock at night. Vahel ma jõuan alles kell 10 õhtul koju. And the, like right now, I'm not going to see my wife for five days. Nagu praegu ma ei näe viis päeva teda. So the only contact I might have with her are three phone calls that take about two minutes. Nii et ainus kontakt emaga on võibolla kolm telefoni kõned, mis võtavad. And so what I said to her on the phone was, that's great. Nii et ma ütlesin talle telefonis, see on suure pärane. Because we were discovering Boston together. Sest me avassime koos Bostonit. And then she kept talking. Ja siis ta muudku jätkas. And I said, Georgia. Ja siis ma ütlesin, Georgia. You have a lot of time right now to talk. Sul on praegu palju aega rääkida. She goes, oh, do you have to go? Oi, kas, kas sa pead minema? I said, yes, I got class. Ja. She, she says, okay, call me later. Ja, mul algab loeng, elista ei viem, ta ütles siis. Do you know how long that phone call was? Kui kaua see kestis? 90 seconds, maybe, a minute. Üks minut võib olla. And sometimes that's all I have in a day is three of those phone calls. Ja vahel mul ongi päevas ainult kolm sellist telefoni kõnet. And if I turn towards her in three short phone calls, what do I come home to? Kui ma nüüd pöördun päevas tema poole kolme sellise telefoni kõne käigus, siis mida ma eest leian, kui ma koju tagasi jõuan? She loves you. A happy one. Ja, yeah, rõõmsa, õnnelik. Someone who's happy to see me. Now, what if I yelled at her? Kui ma karjuksin tema peale? Quit bothering me before class. Ära, segamind praegu. And she has three calls with me in the day. Ja tal on päevas kolm kõned. And I snap at her three times. Ja kui ma kolm korda nii visi nähvan talle. What do I come home to? Mis ma sise eest leian? Kodus. <laughs> Angry wife. Vihase nais. <laughs> so, notice. Pange tähele. It doesn't take much time to turn towards. Et abikasa poole pöördumine nii visi ei võta palju aega. It takes just as much time to turn against. Täpselt sama palju võtab aega see negatiivne vastus, tema vastu pööratud vastus. But if we recognize that in marriage these little exchanges are not just about the words. Et kui me saame aru, et abikelus need väikesed vestlused ei ole ainult need sõnad. But their bids for connection. Vaid palve selle ühenduse loomiseks. It can help us understand how to respond. Siis me saame aru, see aitab meil aru saada, kuidas vastata. If you remember how I met my wife or how you met your spouse. What, what's the first thing you do when you meet someone that you want to meet, when you encounter someone you want to meet? Mis te, kui me nüüd meenutame, kuidas mina kohtusin oma naisega või kui teie kohtusite oma abikasega, siis mis on esimene asi, mis te teete, kui te kohtute kellegagi? kellegagi? What, do you, what do you say? Mida te ütlete? What do they do in Estonia when you want to meet a girl? Mida te teete Eestis, kui te tahate naisega kohtuda, kellegagi kohtuda? Right. Mm? <laughs> what is that? Dress well. Ah, dress well. <laughs> oh, you say something nice. You dress well. What is that? That's a bid for connection. Et see on samamoodi see palve või üleskutse ühendust luua. 
And when a guy says that, what is he waiting for? Ja kui mees ütleb midagi ilusat, siis mis ta ootab? He's waiting for a response. Is she going to turn towards me, away or against? Et ta ootab vastust, et kas nüüd pöördutakse tema poole, temast ära või, või tema vastu. And when the girl turns towards and says thank you, where are you from? I don't know how you do it in Estonia. Ja kui nüüd tüdruk ütleb, et no, ma ka tore, aitäh, et kus, kus te pärit olete, kus sa pärit olete, ma ei tea, kuidas Eestis käib see asi. He sends another bid for connection. And each one is bidding for connection and waiting to see if the other one will turn towards. Ja siis see mees jätkab mingi järgmise sellise lausega, mis on jällegi palve selle ühenduse loomiseks ja vaatab, mis edasi hakkab saama. And as the, the, the man and the woman keep turning towards, the relationship deepens and deepens. Ja kui nad jätkavad sellist üksteise poole pöördumist, siis see suhe süveneb ja muutub sügavamaks. And this process continues in marriage, although the conversations get deeper and deeper. Ja see sama protsess jätkub abielus, ehk need vestlused siis muutuvad sügavamaks ja sügavamaks. For some reason, some couples, when they get married, they stop turning towards each other. Ja mingil põhjusel osa paare, kui nad abielluvad, lõpetavad sellise üksteise poole pöördumise. I don't know why. Ma ei tea, miks. Couples who learn to turn towards each other's bids for connection st- set the stage for working through difficulties that come along the way. Mm-hmm. Et need paarid, kes on, on sellel teel, et, et pöörduda üksteise poole niivisi, nad saavad raskustest paremini jagu. It's as if the relationship gets stronger and stronger, so when they do have difficulties, they can work together through it. Ja suhe muutub üha tugevamaks ja siis kui tulevad probleemid, siis nad saavad ühes koos nendest läbi minna. Couples who turn towards each other when they have difficulty can still have moments of affection, mutual respect and intense interest. Ja isegi siis raskustes need paarid, kes pöörduvad teinedese poole, siis nad kogevad ka just selliseid tunde hetki ja vastastikuse austuse ja sellise intensiivse huvi hetki. Responding, turning towards each other communicates that we are in this together. Üksteise poole pöördumine näitab, et me oleme selles kõiges koos. And this changes the way they handle difficulties. Ja see muudab seda viisi, kuidas nad raskete olukordadega toime tulevad. And John Gottman noticed they can even have moments of humor and laughing as they're working through the difficulties. Ja John Gottman avastas, et seal võib olla isegi nagu humoorikaid hetki ja naermist ka nende raskete olukordade läbi töötamisel. Turning towards someone doesn't mean agreeing with them. Et kellegi poole niivisi pöörduda ei tähenda nõustuda temaga. It means learning how to share appropriately. I disagree. I am not okay. Ja see, see tähendab ka kuidas edastada sõnumit, et ma ei ole nõus ja et see ei sobi mulle. Turning towards might take a lot of courage and strength to speak up and say I am not okay if we're afraid to say that in a relationship. Teise poole pöördumine võib tähendada ka julgust, et öelda, et, et see ei ole okei okay, või minuga ei ole kõik korras juhul, kui me kardame seda teha suhtes. If you want to connect with your spouse, turn towards your bids for connection as much as possible. Kui sa tahad hoida seda suhet, siis nii palju kui võimalik pöörda oma abikasa poole sellisel viisil. So I want to make two points now. Kaks mõtet nüüd. Is there anyone else in the home who is always bidding for connection? Kas kodus on veel keegi, kes kogu aega otsib seda sidet? Who? Children. Lapsed. Children are walking bags of bids for connection. Et lapsed on nagu et koti täied neid palveid sidema ühenduse järgi. That's all they do. Seda nad teevadki kogu aeg. They don't need attention. Nad ei vaja tähelepanu. They need connection. Nad vajavad seda sidet. They are ühendust. created for connection. Nad on loodud selleks sidemeks. And oftentimes as parents we forget. 
ja vahel vanematena me unustame selle that they're bidding for connection et nad paluvad seda sidet meiega and that our job as parents ja meie ülesanne vanematena is to turn towards their bid for connection on pöörduda nende poole vastata sellele palvele even when we're disciplining them isegi siis kui me neid disiplineerime are there any other professions that have people bidding for connection kas on veel ameteid kus inimesed paluvad otsivad seda sidet teachers doctors arstid õpetajad priests preestrid poliitikud <laughs> little bit different no, natuke midagi muud <laughs> but teacher õpetaja children are always bidding for connection to the teacher õpilased kogu aeg otsivad sidet õpetajaga and so our job is to learn how to recognize that ja meie ülesanne on õppida seda tähele panema and how to turn towards that ja kuidas sellele vastata how we respond to our children's bids for connection kuidas me vastame sellele laste palvele side meerele is how they form their identity about themselves on see sellest sõltub kuidas nad missuguse identiteedi nad loovad või missuguse ettekujutuse endast nad loovad they learn that we are cared for and loved when parents and adults turn towards their bids for connection kui me kui vanemad ja õpetajad pöörduvad vastavad nende palvele selle ühenduse järele siis nad õpivad et neist hoolitakse ja neid armastatakse number 2 when i turn towards my wife teiseks kui ma pöördun oma naise poole to whom else am i turning towards siis kelle poole veel ma pöördun we turn towards christ toward me, god me pöördume kristuse jumala poole and we communicate because we believe that we are icons of christ ja me suhtleme niivisi sellepärast et me usume et me oleme kristuse ikoonid and whatever you do towards each other is done towards christ mida iganes me teeme teisele inimesele me teeme kristusele so when we turn towards our spouse kui me pöördume nüüd oma naise või mehe poole we say to god i am interested in you I'm on your team. I value you. Siis me ütleme sellega Jumalale, et ma olen sinu poolel, ma hindan sind. Ma olen sinu meeskonnas. So we make bids for connection out of our natural desire to connect. Me esitame neid palveid ühenduse järele sellest loomulikust vajadusest ühenduse järele. This is part of our relational nature. Meie loomus on selline suhte relational uh, that we are relational people yes. that we thrive in relationships that we suhe, grow in relationships suhe määratleb väga palju meie olemusest suhted turning towards our spouse gives preference to our spouse pöördudes naise või mehe poole me anname tale eelise it's putting our spouse first in that moment me paneme tema esimesele kohale sel hetkel we can also turn away from our spouse on võimalik ka temast ära pöörata. Um, eemale pöörata. There are many examples of turning away. Selle koht on palju näiteid. Um, uh, you know, when I like to travel on an airplane, I like to read. Näiteks kui ma sõidan lennukiga, mulle meeldib lugeda. Because I never have time to read like a newspaper or a magazine. Sest mul ei ole tavaliselt aega ajalehti või ajakirju lugeda. So one time I was traveling with my kids and my wife. Siis ükskord ma reisisin naise ja lastega. And as I went through the airport, I grabbed a newspaper and put it in my bag. Ja lennu jaamas ma haarasin ajalehe, panin kotti. I got on the airplane, restrained all my children. Jõudsin lennukisse, panin lastel rihmad kinni. And as I was sitting down next to my wife, I reached and got my newspaper. Istusin naise kõrvale ja sirutsin käe ajalehe järele. And right when I opened it up, she turned to me and said, "So, how was your day?" <laughs> ja kohe kui ma olin ajalehe avanud, siis ta pöördus minu poole ja küsis, "No, kuidas sul päev läks?" Oh. <laughs> what did I do? I kept reading. Ja mida ma tegin? Jätkasin lugemist. Is that a turning towards? Kas see on naise poole pöördumine? That's a turning away. See on tema ära pöördumine. A preoccupied response. 
on sellist vastust, kui sa oled millegagi hõivatud. Like when you're not really listening. Kui sa tegelikult ei kuule. Um, a correcting response. On sellist nagu korrigeerivat vastamist. A disregarding response. Maha I mean, just, it kind of ignoring or disregarding. Um, you know, and, uh, solving her problem. Või ma hakkan tema probleeme lahendama. Telling her she worries too much. If she's worried about something, oh, you're worried too much. Ütlen, sa muretsed liiga palju. Kui Is that ta turning towards? Kas see on tema poole pöördumine? That's Ei, turning no. away. See on ära pöördumine. She tells me, you know, she gets off the phone with her mother and she's upset. Näiteks ta lõpetab kõne oma emaga ja on ärritunud. I tell her, don't call your mother. Mina ütlen, ära elista ma emale. Turning away. Sellega ma pöördun jälle ära. If turning towards our spouse communicates i care about you kui tema poole pöördumine tähendab edastab sõnumit ma hoolin sinust you're important to me sa oled tähtis mulle what is turning away mida mida edastab see ära pööramine pöördumine i don't care i don't really care about you mind ei huvita see see edastab seda sõnumit anything else veel midagi i don't really want to be with you right now ma ei taha sinuga praegu olla Anything. What's that? I don't want to listen. I don't really want to listen to you. Ma ei taha kuulata praegu. Other things are more important to me. You're not really that important to me right now. Ja, sina ei ole praegu nii tähtis. Teised asjad on tähtsamad. I'm not that interested in you right now. Ma ei ole nii väga sinust huvitatud praegu. I want to avoid you. Ma tahaksin sind vältida. The more you turn away from your spouse, mida rohkem sa oma abikasast niimoodi eemale pöördud, the more difficulties and conflict you will have later. Seda rohkem raskusi ja konflikte hiljem tuleb. Naturally, we all turn away from each other on occasion. Loomulikult me kõik aeg ajalt pöördume eemale niivisi. But if it becomes the primary way you respond to your spouse, aga kui see saab põhiliseks viisiks, kuidas abikasale reageerida, Couples can drift apart. Siis kaks inimest lähevad lah- no, nad triivivad eemale üksteisest, kaugenevad üksteisest. And have real difficulties going down the road. Ja neil on selle abielu teekonnal raskusi. We can also turn against our spouse. Ja veel on võimalik ka abikasa vastu pöörduda. Angry responses. Vihased reageerimised. Aggressive responses. Agressiivsed domineering responses Domi- domineerivad criticism kriitika don't talk to me like that ära räägi minuga niivisi none of your business see ei ole sinu asi it's your own fault see on sinu oma viga i went to estonia i didn't go to latvia ma läksin eestisse mitte lati this is the uh, the, the contradictory response right they are aggressive Need on agressiivsed vastused. They're hostile. Vaenulikud. And what do they communicate? Ja mida need edastavad? Mis sõnumid? I'm angry at you. I'm angry. Ma olen sinu peale vihane. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. Ma vihkan sind. You are stupid. I have no respect for you. What was that? Mm-hmm. I don't love you. Ma ei armasta sind. Ma ei austa sind. I, I want to push you away. I reject you. Ja ma lükkan, tõukan sind eemale. I don't value our relationship. Ma ei väärtusta meie suhet. You make me angry. Sa teed mind vihaseks. So naturally turning against each other is the most damaging thing for relationships. Siis loomulikult selline üksteise vastu pöördumine on kõige kahjulikum suhtele. This includes criticizing, mocking, kritiseerimine, mocking, um, making fun of, um, teise üle nalja heitmine, insulting, solvamine, like name calling, yeah. stonewalling, that's when you're cold and you refuse to speak. Mm, selline distantsi hoidmine või külmus jäisus um, 
It includes any act of infidelity, unfaithfulness. Truudusetus. With our igasugune, eyes igasugune on the internet or with someone. Kellegagi. Silm, sideme kaudu internetis ükskõik, mis viisil. When we turn against our spouse. Kui me pöördume oma abikasa vastu. Who are we turning against? Kelle vastu me pöördume tegelikult? We are turning against Christ. Me pöördume Kristuse vastu. We are communicating to Christ. That I want nothing to do with you. Siis me edastame temale seda sõnumit. Ma ei taha sinuga midagi tegemist teha. Yet it's very tempting in relationships. See on suhtes väga suur kiusatus. When we are hurt or angry. Kui me oleme saanud haiget või oleme vihased. Disappointed or overwhelmed. Pettunud või ülekoormatud. Or annoyed. Või häiritud millestki. To turn against our spouse and turn off the journey of marriage. Pöörduda oma abikasa vastu ja sellelt abielu teekonnalt niivisi kõrvale kalduda. Yet within marriage we are called to turn towards each other. Aga abielus me oleme kutsutud pöörduma üksteise poole. When we're upset. Kui me oleme vihased. When we're angry. Ja ärritunud. When we're overwhelmed. Ülekoormatud. When we're hurt. Oleme haiget saanud. Rather than reacting out of our brokenness. Ja selle asemel, et välja elada seda valu. Or attacking out of our brokenness. Või rünnata seda. We are invited to offer our brokenness. Ühesnaga, et selle asemel, et oma sellist murtud olekud nüüd tema ründamisega välja elada, selle asemel me peame seda nagu andma, pakkuma talle. This is a self-offering. See on enese andmine. And it sounds like I am so mad right now. See on nii, et ma olen praegu väga vihane. I am hurt. Ma olen haiget saanud. I am disappointed. Ma olen pettunud. I am just, I am overwhelmed. Ma olen, mul tund, et lõõvad pea peal kokku. What kind of miserable person are you working with, right? I am all these things. It's learning to offer all these things rather than attack out of these things. Et on vaja õppida andma kõiki neid asju selle asemel, et nendest lähtuvalt rünnata. Learning to put these things to words. Panna, õppida panema neid asju sõnadesse. And share these things. Ja jagama neid asju. Because what we see is we push God away right when we need him the most. Sest et mis juhtub on see, et me lükkame Jumala eemale just siis, kui me teda kõige rohkem vajame. Because for the orthodox, Christ is right between my wife and I. Sest õige usklik jaoks Kristus on täpselt mehe ja naise vahel. If you look at how the orthodox wedding ceremony is, kui te vaatate õige usu abielu liturgiat, The bride and groom do not face each other. Siis pruut ja peigmes ei vaata üksteise poole, üksteisele otsa. And make promises to each other. Ei tee üksteisele, ei ütle tõotusi. I'm a marriage and family therapist. Ma olen perenõustaja. And I know what's going to happen to all those promises that couples make. Ja ma tean, mis juhtub kõikide nende lubadustega, mis antakse tõotustega. My marriage cannot be based on my promises. Minu abielu ei saa baseeruda minu lubadustel. Because like we said, marriage is a journey of learning how selfish I really am. Sest abielu on ju tegelikult teekond mõistmaks, kui isekas ma olen. And being transformed in divine love. Ja et transformeeruda, et leida see jumalik armastus. It's a journey of discovering how selfish and broken I am. See on teekond, et avastada, kui isekas ja kui murtud või katki ma olen. And learning to turn towards Christ with my brokenness. Ja õppida pöörduma Kristuse poole oma selle oma nend, selle murtusega. So in the journey of marriage, I will be tempted to turn away from or against my wife. Abielus, ma nii siis tunnen kiusatust pöörduda ma naisest eemale või tema vastu. What should I do when that happens? Mida ma peaksin tegema, kui see juhtub? Ja 
return toward. Uuesti tema poole pöörduma. How do we understand returning towards God and my wife? Kuidas me mõistame seda, et taas pöörduda oma naise? What's that? Prayer. This is our repentance. See on meeleparandus. Do we know the story of the prodigal son? Kas me teame lugu ära kadunud pojast? What did he do? Mis ta tegi? He returned toward the father. Ta läks tagasi isa juurde. So in fact, marriage is a journey of constantly returning towards my wife as unto the Lord. Teekond kogu aeg ka pöörduda tagasi oma naise poole ja issanda poole. As I'm constantly being tempted and struggling with turning away and turning against. Kui ma kogu aeg võitlen kiusatusega pöörduda temast ära ja pöörduda tema vastu. Because when I return towards God, sest kui ma pöördun tagasi Jumale poole, and I bid for God's connection, ja palun temalt seda ühendust, what does He always do? Mida Jumal alati teeb? He forgives, He loves, and He heals me. Ta annab andeks, ta armastab ja ta teeb terveks. So this journey of returning towards each other is a journey of me constantly being healed and growing. See ka see teekond, see tagasi, pideva tagasi pöördumise teekond on ka minu tervenemise teekond. And through this journey together, I, over time, become healed of my faults and my sins and my struggles. Ja läbi selle ühise teekonna ma lõpuks tervenen oma nõrkustest ja patudest. As we learn, George and I together, how to turn towards God. One another and turn towards God. Kui me oleme nüüd õppinud Georgiaga ühiselt pöörduma üksteise poole ja Jumala poole. And we go closer and closer and closer. Siis me saame lähedusemaks ja üha lähedusemaks. As we become more and more patient, kind, gentle, loving. Muutudes üha kannatlikumaks, hea tahtlikumaks, armastavamaks. This is the happily ever after that God wants for our marriages. See ongi see muinas jõttude lõpp igavesti õnnelikult elasid koos. See on see, mida Jumal tahab abielu jaoks. In America we have the fairy tales. I'm sure you have them here and they live happily ever after. Ja Amerikas meil on need muinas jõttud teil ka kindlasti ja nad elasid õnnelikult. Most people on their wedding day want to live happily ever after. Enamik inimesi laulatuse päeval tahavad niivisi elada. I think that's what God wants too. We're not supposed to be miserable in our marriages. Ja seda tahab ka Jumal, et me ei oleks õnnetud oma abielus. But most people think happily ever after means Enamik inimesi mõtleb, et see õnnelikult igavesti elamine tähendab that I get all my desires met and I need to change my spouse in a few ways. Et kõik minu soovid ja vajadused rahuldatakse ja ma natuke muudan oma abikasad ka. But God's plan for happily ever after is learning to love my wife when I see her faults and letting God change me in just a few little ways. Ja Jumala plaan selle igavese õnne jaoks abielus on see, et ma lasen Jumala lennast natukene muuta ja ma armastan abikasat tema vigadega. The last thing I want to say is that if you are in a relationship now and you learn and you see that what the bids for connection are, viimane asi, mis ma tahan öelda, kui te olete suhtes ja kui te nüüd näete neid seda palvet, ühenduse ja sideme järele, it's really good to pay attention to how you turn towards one another. Siis pöörake tähelepanu sellele, kuidas te vastate. But guess what you will become very aware of? Ja pange tähele, millest te saate väga teadlikuks. That your spouse is turning away or turning against. Sellest, et teie abiga sa pöördub teist ära või pöördub teie vastu. And so people who hear this talk, they go home and they tell us, ah, that's a turning away, that's what he said, that's it. Ja siis inimesed teevad seda, et nad läevad koju ja ütlevad oma abiga sale, aha, see on see ära pööramine ja vastu pööramine, et seda ma just kuulsin. And is that a turning towards? Kas see on nüüd abiga sa poole pöördumine? No. Ei ole. St. Mark the ascetic writes, He who is humble in his thoughts and engaged in spiritual work, when he reads the Holy Scriptures, will apply everything to himself and not to his neighbor. Püha Markus, askeet. 
ütleb, et kes on alandlik oma mõtetes ja teeb vaimsed tööd, siis kui ta loeb pühakirja, siis ta kohaldab selle ise endale ja mitte kunagi oma ligime selle. Questions or comments? Nii, kas teil on küsimusi või kommentaare? Kas te võiksite tuua mõned näited, kuidas abiga sa poole pöörduda veel? With couples? In marriage, you mean? Number one, by, by listening. Kõigepealt, et teda kuulata. And number two, by eye contact. Teiseks silmside. You know, where I come from, um, when you're talking on the phone with someone, I can tell if the other person is checking their email on their laptop. Et näiteks mina saan aru, kui ma telefoniga räägin, kas teine inimene samal ajal trükib midagi arvutisse. Have you noticed that? Olete pannud tähele. How can you tell that someone's checking email and you can't see them? Ja kuidas te saate aru, et ta samal ajal loeb oma e-maili, kui ta telefoniga räägib? You know, the communication isn't quite right, they're not really. Ja see side, see ühendus ei ole päris õige teie vahel. Turning towards means putting the cell phone down, putting, closing the laptop, giving someone your undivided attention. See kellegi poole pöördumine tähendab jagamata tähelepanu kinkimine tal, et ajaleht, telefon, jääd kõrvale. What's it like to be talking to someone and they check their text? Mis tunne on rääkida kellegagi ja ta samal ajal vahepeal vaatab oma sõnumeid? That's not turning towards. In fact, in America, we, it's illegal to drive and text. Is that what it is here too? Yeah, Amerikas ei tohi autot juhtida nii, mis ei samal ajal vaatab telefon. It's more dangerous to text and drive than to drink and drive. Ohtlikum on telefoni, kõrvuti telefoniga juhtida kui alkoholi juhtida. Because if you have a few drinks, you have 50% focus on the road. Kui sa oled joonud paar klaasi veini võibolla, siis 15% tähelepanust on hajunud. But when you look at your phone, 50% tähelepanust on hajunud. When you look at your phone, you have 0% on the road. Aga kui sa vaadad telefoni, siis ei ole mingit tähelepanu teel. So putting away distractions, just listening to each other. Making eye contact, recognizing what someone is saying. Kõik sega ja jätta kõrvale, silm side, panna tähele, mida ta ütleb. A smile. Naeratus. A touch. Puudutus. It doesn't take very much time. See ei võtta palju aega. It takes the same amount of time to turn towards someone as it turns, as it does to turn away or again. Et kellegi poole pöördumine niivisi ei võta sugugi rohkem aega kui temast ära pöördumine või tema vastu pöördumine. Turning towards might sound like I can't talk right now, but I'll be free in an hour. Et kellegi poole pöördumine võib tähendada ka seda, et te ütlete, et ma ei saa praegu rääkida, aga ma tunni aja pärast saan. Did you notice what happened when my wife called right before I was going to go up to talk? Panite tähele, mis juhtus, kui mu naine helistas enne. Enne seda, kui ma pidin minema loengut pidi. And I forgot to turn off my phone. Ja ma unustasin telefoni välja lüüditada. Why was she calling me and interrupting me? Miks ta helistas ja segas mind? And I told her, I can't talk right now. Ja ma ütlesin, ma ei saa praegu rääkida. And just communicate that. And then I knew what she wanted. I handed the phone to someone and they videoed. Do you know why I did that? Ja ma teadsin, mis ta soovib. Ja niimoodi ma andsin oma telefoni kellelegi ja seda sai üle kanda. I did that because I'm gone for five days and that's the only connection we have for five days is through the phone. Ma tegin seda sellepärast, et ma olen viis päeva ära ja see on ainus viis läbi telefoni tema ka sidet pidada. How much time did it take me to give my phone to someone and say, please video, my, call my wife with FaceTime video? Et kui palju sa aega võttis, et ma ulatasin selle telefoni kellelegi ja palusin tal filmida ja see side luua. And there's only one reason I did that is because I know that this is actually how we stay connected. Ja ma tegin seda just sellepärast, et ma teadsin, et see on viis, kuidas me saame seda sidet hoida. So my friends will laugh at me and tell me, oh, you're traveling to go teach people how to be a good husband and a good dad. <laughs> ja mul sõbrad naeravad, et sa käid ja reisid ringi ja õpetad inimestele, kuidas olla hea abikaasa ja hea isa. You leave your children to go tell people how to spend time with their children. And I tell them, this is how I do it. 
I make sure I turn towards all of their bids for connection. Ja ma ütlen vastan niivisi, et ma teen seda sel moel, et ma samas vastan kõikidele nende palvetele selle ühenduse järele. So turning towards is, is, is the responding that we talked about. Just responding and not reacting. Mm -hmm. See ühenduse loomine on just nimelt vastamine, millest me oleme rääkinud, mitte reageerimine. And learning when you can't respond and you feel like reacting, turning towards means I can't talk right now or I'm going to react. Või siis, et sa saad aru, et sa ei suuda sel hetkel rohkem vastata, et siis sa ütled, et ma ei saa praegu vastata või muidu ma reageeriksin. And when üle. you come home or you're too tired, even saying I'm too tired right now, That's turning towards. Isegi see, kui ma ütlen, et ma olen praegu liiga väsinud, see on ka ikkagi tema poole pöördumine. If all we can do is fall, we can fall towards as opposed to falling away. <laughs> et isegi kui kõik, mis me suudame, on kukkuda pikali, siis me võime ikkagi tema poole kukkuda pikali, mitte temast ära. Because the mistake that couples make is with their last bit of energy, they'll turn against each other. Et viga, mida paarid teevad, et selle viimase energia, mis neil on, nad pööravad üksteise vastu. But what happens is if you use your last bit of energy to turn towards each other, remember what it communicates. Aga mõelge, mida see tähendab, kui te selle viimase energia piisa kasutate üksteise vastu pööramiseks. And then you find strength and intimacy. <coughs> kui te seda ei tee, siis te leiate üksteisest jõudu ja leiate läheduse. The more couples learn to turn towards each other, By sharing what they're struggling with, sharing who they are and learning how to communicate, learning to pay attention to the other person. Mida rohkem paarid õpivad niivisi ka oma raskustes üksteise poole pöörduma, üksteist tähele panema. The more, no matter what struggles, come down the road, they grow closer. Siis ükskõik, mis raskused ette tulevad, niivisi nad saavad lähedasemaks. And sometimes in marriage there might be some tension. Ja abielus võib olla pingeid. We might be fighting over some issue. Võib olla vajaldakse mingi teema üle. But when you sit down to dinner, aga kui istutakse maha lõunat sööma, you are still bidding for connection. Ikkagi luuakse seda sidet. And you can say, please pass the salt. And you pass the salt. Saad öelda, palun ulata mulle soola. You can still say, this is a very nice dinner. Et väga maitsev toit on. Because these little exchanges over nothing The business of the home is actually bidding for connection. Et selle, need väikesed asjad, see kodus toimetamine, need on ka palve ühenduse ja sidema järele. And this is how we communicate that we're on the same team, even though we haven't figured out how to solve this problem. Ja niimoodi me edastame sõnumit, et me oleme ikkagi ühes paadis vaatamata sellele, et me ei ole võibolla seda teemat veel lahendanud. Questions or comments? Can I, can I say, Raika said that the don't speak to me or like that when I was, I can't speak to you or when I was tired, I don't know. Is it turning away? If you say don't speak, oh, go ahead. Yeah, et lapsena, kui, et kui öeldakse, et ära räägi minuga, kas see on nagu ära pööramine, pöördumine teisest? If I say don't speak to me, Kui ma ütleksin, et ära räägi minuga. That's aggressive. See on agressiivne. If I say I can't speak to you right now. Kui ma ütlen, ma ei saa sinuga praegu rääkida. That's a turning tour. See on kellegi poole pöördumine. And when your spouse says I can't talk right now. Kui su abiga sa ütleb, ma ei saa praegu rääkida. What does the spouse do? Mis ta teeb? Ma ei saa praegu rääkida. You respect it. Ja, sa austad seda. And you might say, when can you talk to me? Ja sa saad vastata, et aga millal sa saaksid minuga rääkida. Or in a, you might just allow that. Et sa võid lubada seda. And come back to it later. Ja, ja tulla hiljem selle juurde tagasi. And what you learn to do as a couple. Ja mida sa paarina õpid. Is learn to have a plan. Õpite ka planeerima. When one person can't talk, they're free to say, I can't talk. And they have a plan that will come, will bring it up in 15 minutes or in one day. Et kui ta ei saa paresti praegu rääkida, siis saab teha plaani 15 minuti pärast või kas või järgmisel päeval. You give each other permission to say, I can't talk right now. Et sa annad teisele ka loa öelda, et ma ei saa praegu rääkida. That's a turning towards. 
See on ka and that teise, happens. Teise poole pöördumine ja seda juhtub. So the struggles happen in marriage, but it's a it's a lie that the struggles need to turn us against each other. Uh, the I'm struggles sorry. happen in marriage. Yeah, need raskused, mis abielus ette but tulevad. It's a lie that they that we need to turn against each other. Et see on vale, et 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 me peaksime siis pöörduma üksteise vastu. I might be mad at my wife. Ma võin olla pahane But I don't need to attack her. Aga ma ei pea teda ründama. I can share with her. I am so mad. I can't talk right now. I'm mad at you. Ma võin, ma võin öelda, et ma olen väga vihane, et ma ei saa praegu rääkida. Yes. <laughs> ma proovin. Kui on niimoodi, et vanemad arutavad mine sama vahel. Ja no, küsivad tähelepanu. Ja on just selles algus. Ja aga lapsed ka tulevad tähelepanu külima ja lendavad sinna niimoodi oma küsimusega sisse. When parents uh, just start a conver conversation and then bid for um, connection, yes. and then at the same moment children come in and bid for connection, what should we do? The adults in the family should make a plan. Et täiskasvanud peavad perekonnast tegema plaani. The adults in the family can step back and say this happens every night at dinner time. Et vanemad saavad astuda samu tagasi öelda, et see juhtub iga kord lõunasõgel. For example, so why don't we make a plan together as husband and wife? Teeme koos plaani nüüd mehe ja naisena. How to stay connected and then turn towards our kids. Et kuidas omavahelis sidet hoida ja lastega seda sidet hoida. The problem is Probleem on selles. When the wife feels pulled between turning towards her kids or turning towards her husband. Et probleem on nüüd selles, kui naine tunneb, et ta on nagu kahe vahel ühelt poolt tema mehe vahel ja tema laste vahel. Do you know what the problem with that is? Mis see probleem tekib? Whose kids are they? Kelle lapsed need on? Are they her kids? Kas need on tema naise lapsed? No. Uh, da. Ei, ei ole. They are our kids. Need on meie lapsed. So it's not the mother's job to turn towards the kids. Nii et see ei ole ema ülesanne pöörduda laste poole. It's the mother and father's job to turn towards the kids. Which means the mother and father have a plan to turn towards each other and then work out a plan of when we are going to turn towards the kids. Ja siis on ema ja isa ülesanne mõelda välja selline plaan, et nad saavad üksteise omavahelis sidet hoida ja ka lastele reageerida või vastata. If you ever feel pulled between your children and your husband. Kui sa tunned, et sa oled kuidagi mehe ja laste vahel, et siin just kui kistakse kahele poole. That's a problem in the oneness of marriage siis see on probleem abielu nagu ühtsuses. And in some cultures they think that the children are the mother's responsibility. Mõnes kultuuris mõeldakse, et lapsed on ema vastutus. And often in the same cultures they think the man is the head of the household. Ja, ja huvitaval kombel samas kultuuris mõeldakse, et isa on perepea. So I am the head of my household. Ma olen oma perepea which means the children are also my responsibility. Sega lapsed on minu vastutus. Although I'm not the primary parent who stays home. Ehk ma ei ole see vanem, kes on nendega peamiselt kodus. The job of the husband is to make sure the wife is doing well. Mehe ülesanne on tagada, et nai, naine naisel läheb hästi, teeb hästi kodus oma. And then together to make sure the children are doing well. Ja koos tagavad selle, et lastel läheb hästi. Marriage is a path of learning how to do that. Ja abielu ongi teekond, et õppida seda tegema. And as you learn it through the mistakes, ja kui selle ajal, kui sa seda õppid, tehes vigu, because God loves us, he gives us dinner time every day, sest Jumal armastab meid ja ta on andnud meile igal päeval selle lõunasöögi aja, the husband and wife can make a plan. Saavad mees ja naine teha plaani. And in our home, sometimes the plan is, 
Ja meie kodas on plaan selline. When mom and dad are talking, children do not interrupt. Et on reegel, kui ema ja isa räägivad, siis lapsed ei sega vahele. It, mm? Is it working, I was asked. Ah, ja, kas see, kas see töötab? If you mean, are they learning? Yes. Kas do see, they do it successfully? No. Kas, kas nad õppivad seda tegema? Jah. Kas nad teevad seda kogu aeg edukalt? Ei. And it works best when first we listen to our children and then we talk and they are not permitted. Ja kõige paremini see õnnestub siis, kui me kõige pealt kuuleme oma lapsi, lapsed ära ja siis räägime oma vahel ja neil ei ole lubatud segada vahele. So my wife and I have decided when I come home, I connect first to the children. Nii et me oleme abikasega kokku leppinud, et kui ma tulen koju, siis ma kõige pealt loon sideme lastega. Other marriages I know, they do the opposite. They say first dad goes to hey, I had a mom. And then he connects to the children. Ja on peresid, kus see on teistpidi, et isa kõigepealt tuleb koju ja on kokku lepitud, tervitab ema. And then, when the husband and wife are connecting to the children, you can then set those boundaries and say, no interrupting when I'm talking to mom. Mm-hmm. Ja kui ema isa on, neil on lastega selline side olnud, siis saab seada selle piiri, et kui ema ja isa räägivad, siis vahel ei tohi segada. So what we're working on now is when I'm talking to my wife on the phone, to have the kids not interrupt. Ja me nüüd praegu teeme tööd selle kallale, et kui ma räägin telefoniga oma naisega, et siis lapsed ei segaks vahele. And we're very strict about it. Ja me oleme väga ranged. <laughs> and they have no respect for it. Ja aga nemad veel seda reeglid üldse ei austa. And this is the path. They ja are learning. Ja see on teekond. Nad õppivad. And I'm trying to teach. Ja mina püüan neile seda õpetada. So it's working perfectly. <laughs> ja nii et see töötab väga hästi. <laughs> I met the persons who kind of learn this positive attitude and they learn to say something <coughs> positive in each situation. But I feel that they are not sincere. They just, you know, very fast, very skilled in looking, you know, what positive I could say. But I don't believe them in this situation. And I am thinking of what we were talking about in the morning. Uh, teachers, you know, smile every time. Maybe I feel really bad and I had a, I don't know, accident, whatever, don't feel good. And still, as a teacher, you know, you understood. I know it's about, the, it's not about them, it's about me who should be learning. I know, but... <laughs> I will say something. Yeah, the question on selles, et, et no, ommikul oli ka juttu sellest, kuidas õpetaja peaks naeratama palju ja et on kohtunud ka inimestega, kes püüavad ja võib-olla oskavadki olla väga positiivsed igas olukorras, aga see vahel just kui tundub võlts, on nii visi. Et kuidas seda kommenteerida? So, um, I'm at home working sometimes and I have many children at home and my son will say, I need help with math. Ja ma olen kodus näiteks töötan, mul on palju lapsi ja tuleb poeg ja ütleb, et ma vajan abi matemaatika ülesandega. How am I feeling? Kuidas ma ennast tunnen? Overwhelmed. Ma tunnen, et see on frustrated. Frustreerunud olen. And anxious that I'm not going to get my work done. Ja ärevuses, et ma ei saa oma tööd teha. Do I want to help him? Kas ma tahan teda aidata? No, ma ei tea. My feelings Minu tunded, say I don't want to do this. Ma ei taha. Tunded ütlevad, ei taha. What I know is true. Aga ma tean, et tõsi on see. Is that this is this is my role. Et see on minu roll. And I know I connect with my son. Ja ma loon tema ka sideme. And I know if I'm responsive as a father. Ja kui ma olen isana, tunnen vastutust. He will not only learn math, but he'll become a strong person. Et ta mitte ainult ei õpi matemaatikat, vaid temast saab ka tugev isikses. And I know that that self-sacrifice is love. Ja ma tean, et selline enese ofertus on armastus. Because love is not a feeling. Sest armastus ei ole tunne. Do you think Jesus felt like being crucified? Kas, kas te arvate, et Jeesusel oli see tunne, et ta, teda võideks risti lüüa või et ta tahaks, et teda risti lööda? The greatest act of love that God has done for humanity was not what he felt like doing. Et suuri mohver armastuse tegu, mille Jumal tegi, ei olnud see tunne, mida ta oleks tahtnud teha. He chose to be obedient as an act of love in spite of what he was feeling. See oli valik, see oli kuulekus, vaatamata sellele, mida ta tundis. So we have to recognize that our feelings are not true. 
Me peame aru saama, et meie tundet ei ole tõde. Because many of us believe that if I choose to do one thing and I'm feeling the other, I'm being fake. Paljud mõtlevad või tunnevad, et kui ma tunnen üht, aga teen teist, et see on võlds. And people will say in English, you fake it until you make it. Inglise keele seldaks, et nii kaua teeskled, kuni sa teed seda päriselt. And I disagree. Because I don't think I'm being fake with my son. Ja ma ei arva, et ma oleks siin võlds oma pojaga. I think I'm walking in truth, no matter what I'm feeling. Ma arvan, et ma kõnin ikkagi tões vaatamata sellele, mida ma tunnen. Because sometimes our feelings go towards the negative. Sest vahel meie tunded lähevad negatiivses suunas. We tend to notice people's faults, including our spouse. Ja me kaldume, märkame inimeste vigu. And our children. Abikase vigu ja laste vigu. We notice first all the things they do wrong. Me esimesena näeme kõike, mis nad teevad valesti. But if we look closely, there's a lot of things they're doing right. Aga kui me vaatame lähemalt, siis seal on palju asja, mis nad teevad õigesti. So we, we can't act on our fallen desires. Me ei saa tegutseda lähtuvalt oma nagu langenud ihadest. That's what animals do. Seda teevad loomad. What we have as human beings Aga inimestena is the capacity to choose to do what's true no matter what we're feeling. Inimestena on meil võimalus valida teha seda, mis on õige vaatamata tunnetele. So, I think it's appropriate to comment on something good. Nii et ma arvan, et on tegelikult õige või kohane teha märkus või kommenteerid, teha komplimente ja märgata positiivselt. Ja otsustada, et kas ma pean rääkima sellest negatiivsest. Because it depends on the situation. Sest see sõltub olukorrast ka. And what I have found is Ja mida ma olen avastanud in marriage, in parenting and in teaching. Abielus, lapsevanemana ja õpetades. Notice what someone is doing well. Pane tähele, mida keegi teeb hästi. It connects people. See ühendab inimesi. It communicates love. See edastab armastust. And the more someone experiences love, ja mida rohkem keegi tunneb armastust, the more they can open up their eyes and see what I need to get better at. Ja seda parem on tal avada silmiga ja näha, mida ta saaks teha paremini. Love is the context for seeing our mistakes, not criticism. Armastus on see kontekst, milles näha oma vigu, mitte kriitika. So in marriage, you can make a rule. Abielus võite teha reegli. Wait one week to criticize your spouse. Kõigepealt oota üks nädal enne kui abikasad kritiseerid. And if it's still important in a week, you'll remember it. Ja kui see on veel nädal aja pärast oluline, siis see on sul meeles. And if you don't do that, ja kui ei ole, the marriage becomes filled with criticism. Ja kui sa ei tee seda, siis see abielu on täis kriitikat. You wouldn't believe the number of things I can do wrong in a day. Nüüd sa kõõta ette, kui palju asju ma teen päeva jooksul valesti. And the number of things I can do well. Ja aga kui palju asju ma võin ka teha hästi. I have a question. I'm not sure I can use all the words correctly. Estonian, do it. I'm Russian. Okay. So, if we take our beliefs about Holy Trinity and the faces about the Holy Trinity and the similarity of that to the humans and their connection, uh, mm, so now you address uh, like one side, what is like undivided, if I, uh, uh, but uh, it also has the uh, saying like non confident I think that should be uh, correct in, in English. So, uh, uh, let's say if any kind of division appears, it's of course a problem. But if uh, the confidence appears, mm -hmm. and those bits for connection, they can also <coughs> be bits for confidence. Confluence. Confluence, yeah. How to address that? So, I think you're asking, 
I think he's asking, how do you handle the differences that are a natural part of marriage and the coming together? No, 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 no. Because the, uh, you, you describe the unity, we should be one, but we should also be different. Yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And the differences are appropriate. Yeah, but uh, uh, very often it happens, at least in, uh, in our culture, that uh, people's, uh, people have some um, serious like, problems and so on. And that's why uh, many feel into um, the conference. And they take a marriage, the kind of conference. Slyania. Oh, unity. No, no, no. Con in a, no. I think a conference is. So, a coming together, like we need to agree? Yeah, yeah like to. Ah, no, no, compliance. No, the, the compliance. Compliance. Situation, then the borders between yeah. two faces are uh, one of the person, for example, the marriage, uh, has a. Uh, wants to um, break the borders, like natural borders between uh -huh. two people. Yeah. Th that's what a uh, uh, psychological term right. stands for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, this, uh, it, it goes like, uh, um, I, I especially bre uh, t uh, took this uh, example of the uh, uh, Trinity, uh, that uh, they are undivided, but not contrary. That's right. That's right. But uh, often those bits for connection, connection are I not see. bits for uh, unity, I see. but bits for confluence. Yes. yes. And so I think what you're asking is what do healthy boundaries look like mm -hmm. in a marriage? Mm -hmm. And how to keep them. And how to keep them. Uh, uh, Kysymys on siis sellainen, että kõik, mis juut oli, oli, kui me võtame üha kolmaintsuse omadusi või mis me teema või me usume, et isikud on mitte jagatud, kui see on. Kas eraldamatud või? Eraldamatud, but mitte kogu segatud. Jah, jah. Õigi sõna, mis oleks? No olemus ühtsed. Nad on nagu kolm ainsuses, eks ole? Nad on eraldi isiksus, et nad ei nagu ei sula kokku. Just. Jah. Ja et kõik mis me kuulsime, oli sellest eraldamatud. Kui me räägime teisest, nagu võibolla vastas poolest, et see, ja kuidas siis tegutseda, kui need ühenduse palved on mitte sellest nagu koos olemised, või just nagu sellest nagu kogu sulamised palved. Okei. So, um, one of the things that couples need to work out is exactly that. Because the two becoming one does not mean we lose ourselves. Or become a half of a person. But oftentimes, in my country, especially at the start of relationships, they become one and they each lose themselves. Eriti ja minu kultuuris eriti suhte alguses juhtubki see, et inimesed sulavad niimoodi kokku kaotades ise ennast. And it often comes from our families and our, our longing to be loved by someone. Ja see on juba meie perekondades tingitud ja meie soovist olla armastatud. Because the only way to have a healthy relationship is to be two people connected and not one person. Et ainus viis seda tervet suhet saavutada on olla kaks eraldi inimest, kes on ühenduses, aga mitte just kokku sulanud. The way to arrive at that and achieve that is over time as you learn to turn towards each other. Ja tegelikult niimoodi teise inimese poole pöördumisega seda õpitaksegi. You will discover that we are suffocating each other. Noh, te avastate, et nagu lämmatate üksteist. And I can tell my wife, I feel suffocated. Ja ma võin oma naisele öelda, et ma tunnen ennast kuidagi lämmatatuna. 
That's a turning towards. Ja see on ka tema poole pöördumine. But I'm not going to be able to say that. <laughs> Aga ma ei saa seda öelda. Nobody talks like that. Keegi nii visi päris ei räägi. I'm going to feel it. Ma tunnen seda. And I'm going to be too afraid to say it. Ja, ja ma oleksin, ma kardaksin seda öelda. So instead, I'm going to push away or something. Ja, ja selle semel ma siis tõukan teda eemale lihtsalt. This is why uh, it's very important. Selle pärast on väga tähtis. To have a third person in the relationship. Et suhtes on kolmas isik. A spiritual father. Vaimne, vaimulik isa. A priest. Preester. A therapist who knows the path. Või, või terapeut, kes seda teekonda teab. Who can help the couple negotiate. Kes aitab paaridel läbi rääkida. The boundaries between who I am and who you are. Et neid piire nagu sätida, et kes sina oled ja kes mina olen. And build healthy, sustainable connection. Ja ehitada üles selline terve ja jätkusuutlik suhe. Because we all need to learn that. Sest me kõik peame seda õppima. Last thing I'll say. Viimane asi. To go from unhealthy connection to healthy connection. Sellisest ebatervest sidemest üleminek tervesse suhtesse. Can feel like the end of the marriage. Võib tunduda nagu abielu lõpp. Because healthy connection is something a couple needs to learn sometimes for the first time. Sest sellist tervet suhet peab võibolla see paar õppima üldse esimest korda elus. So couples will report to me, it doesn't feel like love at all. Ja vahel paarid ütlevadki, et see üldse ei ole nagu armastuse moodi. And I explain to them, ja ma seletan neile, what feels like love is that unhealthy no boundary. Et, ja ma pean neile seletama, et see, mis, mis on nagu see armastuse tunne nende jaoks on tegelikult see ilma piirid, et kokku sulamine. But we need to choose to do what's right, no matter what we're feeling. Aga me peame tegema seda, mis on õige, vaatamata sellele, mida me tunneme. So we trust the process of growing in marriage. Me peame usaldama seda protsessi, abielus, kasvamise protsessi. And learning to turn towards each other with what we're experiencing. Ja õppima üksteise poole pöörduma ka selles, mida me läbi elame ja kogeme. That we grow on this path of oneness. Ja siis me selle üks olemise teel kasvame. And we know that actually it's the Holy Spirit that enables us to stay connected and to grow as whole human beings in that oneness. Ja, ja me peame teadma, et tegelikult püha vaim juhib ja kasvatab meid selles suunas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. you I'm not a job. professional, I'm sorry. Great job. Thank you.